Hi, it's Malu from Natural Heroes, where we show you how to make natural, vegan and zero waste products in under 30 minutes from the comfort of your own kitchen. If you are new here and you want to find the tools, recipe instructions or ingredients from this video, you can find everything in the description box down below. And also please subscribe if you want to see more DIY videos every week. Today, I will show you how to easily make a luxurious natural balm that will moisturize, heal and protect even the most dry and cracked skin without having to buy expensive products from the store. And stick around until the end of this video so I can show you how you can personalize this recipe with your favorite oils and essential oils. Autumn is here, the leaves are turning brown and my mood is going down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm actually quite happy this time of year. My skin, however, is not a fan of this weather. It is much drier than in summertime and it really needs some extra care. And my grandma actually told me that she only used a simple balm to protect her face for the dry cold winters. So I decided to take a few of my favorite natural ingredients that would make a great balm and feed my skin the essential nutrients that it needs. So this recipe will be much easier than some of my earlier recipes and I can assure you anyone can do this. All you need is a double boiler, a glass beaker, a thermometer and a spoon and you're good to go. I'll put the tools in the description down below as usual so that you can prepare yourself and get ready. So let's begin making this balm. I have this um, glass beaker here and the first step you're gonna do is melt the waxes. And for the waxes, I've chosen two of my favorites. We're going for Miracle Fruit Wax and Berry Wax. And together, they really feel similar to beeswax. They feel firm yet smooth on the skin and they don't clog pores. So we are adding three grams of Miracle Fruit Wax and one and a half grams of Berry Wax in this recipe. Okay, so make sure you melt your waxes first before you add the butters. For the butters, I of course have chosen organic and unrefined shea butter because honestly, there's no substitute for this heavenly African nut butter out there. It gives such a beautiful structure to the balm and it heals the most dry and itchy skins out there. And it's simply amazing. I had to put it in the balm. We are adding seven and a half grams of this in the balm. I've added coconut butter to this as well as it is a hard butter with a mild scent and it really gives a nice structure to the balm. And also it's actually one of the few butters that doesn't feel greasy on the skin. <laughs> and now this beaker starts to make a sound. The waxes have been melted and we are going to add the butters in there. And we're gonna melt them together with the waxes. So the coconut butter is actually one of the few butters that doesn't feel greasy on the skin. It's even suitable for people with oily skin. However, it does leave a thin layer over the skin that helps to protect it for the coming winter months. So it's a really cool ingredient. Now let's have a look at the oils. So we are adding four oils with different skin benefits. We are adding two of them in the first stage and two of them in the cooling down stage as they are heat sensitive. We will add four and a half grams of jojoba oil, which is actually a liquid wax and mimics the natural sebum of your skin. It doesn't feel greasy and it's lightweight, absorbs quickly and regenerates all skin types. And we're adding three grams of calendula oil, which is a macerated oil based on organic sweet almond oil that is super soothing for dry and flaky skin. So the jojoba oil and the calendula oil are going in there. Now, just with a spoon, give it a quick mix. So we can only add the other two oils when this mixture is below 40 degrees because these oils are heat sensitive. Okay, so the mixture is now at around 52 degrees. So that's a little bit too hot for the other oils. You could put it in a fridge as well, but you have the risk of the waxes actually turning solid or you could just leave it at room temperature. Okay, so now that our mixture is below 40 degrees, we will add our heat sensitive oils. I've chosen rice bran oil and chia seed oil, um, both excellent oils. Rice bran oil is high in antioxidants like vitamin E and very rich in essential fatty acids that your skin needs. It is packed with high levels of omega-6 and 9 that help to regenerate and protect your skin. We are adding 7.2 grams of this in the recipe. And to that, we are adding chia seed oil, which is perfect for irritated and inflamed skin and it will help soothe the skin in times of stress and uh, give it a nice boost in winter time. So we will add this to the mixture 
and give it a quick stir again. And to this, we are adding 0.15 grams of the vitamin E oil that will protect our oils from going rancid and prolong the shelf life of the balm. And to this, we will add vanilla CO2 extract, which is a beautiful extract that's actually made from fresh vanilla beans. That's right, you can even eat it. And it smells like vanilla cupcakes and your skin and you will love it and your lover as well because you will smell like cupcakes. So we will add 0.15 grams of the vanilla CO2. Give it a quick stir. Okay, so now we will cool off this mixture in our water bath with cool elements. So we will keep stirring this until it forms a trace, meaning that when you um, stir through it, you'll see the lines of the of the spoon in the mixture. And then you know it's ready to transfer it to the glass jar. So you can already see a trace forming. This will only take five minutes or so. So you can transfer the balm to the 30 milliliter jar. You'll see this is what it looks like now. It looks like vanilla custard. That's what it smells like. Mmm, so good. It's like liquid gold. Ooh. So now you can put this jar in the fridge and I would advise you to leave the lid off for the first hour and maybe put a little bit of uh, a piece of paper on there or a cloth or anything. And then after one hour, you can put the lid on top because if you put a lid on top straight away, um, you can have that the balm will start to sweat because it's still a little bit warm. And then you can have like droplets on the balm. So you prevent that from happening to just put it in the fridge for one hour and then cover the lid after one hour. That's all, very simple, right? So there are many ways you can tweak this recipe to your personal skin needs and preferences. You can tweak the oils in this recipe for any oils you have left in your cupboard. And examples of tweaks are one, you can go super simple, where you replace the coconut butter with the shea butter and use one single oil in the oil phase. You can, for example, use sweet almond oil for dry skin and add rose geranium as your essential oil. Or you could add jojoba oil for oily skin and add sweet orange essential oil, for example. What you could also do is you could transform this balm into a luxurious balm for mature skin. You could, for example, replace the rice bran oil with prickly pear seed oil and the chia seed oil with rosehip oil. And then you could add frankincense essential oil or neroli essential oil that all have added skin benefits for mature skin. So yeah, whatever you choose, make sure that you take a few things into consideration. First of all, check if your oils are heat sensitive. If you are unsure about your oil being heat sensitive, leave a comment down below and I will help you out. Also, of course you can add any essential oil that you like in this recipe, but just make sure that the total percentage doesn't exceed 1% to avoid skin irritation. So if you want to learn more details about how to make this yourself, please check the link in the description down below. And I would love to see what you come up with and I'm very keen on seeing your recipes. So if you have any balm recipe that you love and would love to share with the world, please tag us on Instagram so that we can see your beautiful creations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.